Welcome back. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu fails to secure the majority in his country's national elections. With about 90% of the vote counted, Netanyahu's uh, Likud party trails behind Gantz, uh, Benny Gantz, uh, blue and white party by one seat. According to the Jerusalem Post, their center right and uh, center left blocks are locked in 56 seats in the Knesset and the, uh, um, excuse me, and appear to set the fall of uh, fall short of the 61 needed to form a governing coalition. Amid the uncertainty, Netanyahu has decided to cancel his visit to the UN General Assembly next week. The elections of the uh, sorry, the results of the election uh, place serious doubt on Netanyahu's political future. Also looming in the country in coming weeks, the prime minister is expected to be in, indicted on corruption charges. Let's welcome in Harvard Law Professor uh, at Alan Dershowitz. We appreciate it. He is also a Newsmax contributor. Uh, he's the author of Defending Israel, the story of my relationship with my most challenging client. What's your takeaway from this election? And is the end of Netanyahu's reign in the sights? It's too early to tell. Uh, the army votes haven't yet counted, although apparently 90 some odd percent of the votes are counted. And it's been a, a virtual tie. Uh, the two people who will have enormous influence on the future are the president of Israel, uh, Rivlin, and the um, man who uh, could make either party uh, a majority, and that is uh, Victor Lieberman. He's the kingmaker. The other person who will have an enormous influence on the future, of course, is the attorney general of Israel, uh, who uh, Mandelblit, who will have to make the decision whether or not to indict um, the current prime minister. But we're a long way from any of those decisions. There will be a lot of negotiation going on. It's possible we could end up with a, a government that unites both Likud and the Blue and White Party and forms a national unity government, even possibly as happened in Israel's past, with uh, the prime ministership alternating between the heads of either of those two parties. So it's possible. Yeah. We can see Gantz as prime minister along with uh, Netanyahu dividing their prime ministership over the years. I mean, it has serious implications for uh, here in America because that's our, you know, a strong ally of ours and a sea of people who really don't like us that much. But what implications does this have for the Middle East and at a time when there are heightened tensions between the U.S. and Iran? Uh, considerable implications, both for Iran and for the peace plan that was supposed to be rolled out as soon as the election were over and a new government is formed. Uh, we may have a new government within 30 days. We may not. There's even a conceivable possibility of an, another election. I don't think that's going to happen. I think the Israelis are a little tired of elections, two in one year. I don't think they want a third one. But the implications are, are serious. Look, Netanyahu, whether you like him or not, and I do, I've known him since he's a, a young man of, in his 20s, um, has steered Israel through some of the most complicated periods of his history. He can pick up a phone and talk to Putin and the head of China and the head of Japan and the head of India. He has all this experience and he's very, very sophisticated. Uh, Gantz is a very good man, but he doesn't have the experience. And so there'll be a learning curve for any new prime minister. And Israel can't really afford much of a learning curve right. following uh, what it faces in Iran and other parts of the uh, the Middle East. You know, it's crazy that you know he worked with President Trump to move the uh, our embassy to Jerusalem, recognizing it as their capital uh, and recognizing it as a significant portion of their history and things like that. And, and it seems like people are almost angry about it. Now, is is that the, is that true? I don't think so. Remember when Winston Churchill helped the Brits uh, win the Second World War? How did they respond in the next election? They threw him out of office. Um, People sometimes just tire of somebody who is their leader, and sometimes they don't reward success. So, uh, you know, Netanyahu has been called by some a Churchillian figure, and it's possible the Israeli citizens are treating him like the Brits treated uh, uh, Churchill. Um, he can come back. I mean, Israeli prime ministers have served uh, into their 80s, um, and he's only 69. So um, don't write uh, Benjamin Netanyahu off so quickly. He is one of the most important leaders in the history of Israel. Yeah. Well, we were talking a little bit about Iran either and the importance, especially now, what we've seen. So President Trump says he will order the Treasury Department to increase sanctions uh, against the rogue, rogue country. But meanwhile, the Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, is in the Middle East discussing the recent attack on the Saudi oil fields. Um, you know, before his meeting with the uh, w with with all the, with the Saudi count, Crown Prince, Pompeo told reporters 
the attack was an, quote, act of war against the world's top oil expo uh, exporter. Today, the Saudi military revealed what it had said, it, what it said is undeniable proof that Iran was behind it, although they deny any involvement. The Iranian-backed Houthi rebels also threatened Saudi, uh, Saudi Arabia and the UAE with more attacks. Professor Dershowitz, was this the right move for Trump to call for more sanctions on Iran? It's the minimal move. Um, I do think when an ally of the United States is militarily attacked in an act of war, mm -hmm. there has to be a military response. I'm not a hawk by any means, but I think the Iranians are testing uh, the Trump administration. Uh, first, they shot down a hundred million dollar drone. Right. Uh, now they're attacking our allies' oil supplies and the world's oil supplies. They have to be stopped. Uh, if sanctions won't stop them, uh, then there has to be some military action. I'm not talking about troops on the ground. I'm talking about a proportional or a slightly more than proportional response to a clear act of war by Iran. Iran is clearly developing nuclear weapons, and they will have a nuclear arsenal if nothing is done to stop them. Okay, so, so President, now, now that we're talking about, uh, you know, the, the national security threats out there, President Trump chose uh, U.S. hostage negotiator Robert O'Brien to replace John Bolton as the next national security advisor. Now, O'Brien has served as a Trump special envoy of the hostage affairs since May of 2018. He also served as a foreign policy advisor to several Republican presidential campaigns. Uh, it, it, this is something, does this guy hold, uh, you know, solutions beyond, uh, beyond war? Or is he going to come in there in, in uh, uh, Bolton's footsteps, you think? Well, I think it was very important for Bolton to be the national security advisor. Whether the president takes his advice or not, it was very important to send a message that there is somebody in the White House close to the president who is uh, calling for tough responses. Uh, the president can then make a decision whether to have those responses. Mm -hmm. Remember when the drone was shot down, Bolton proposed the military response. The president was almost ready to do it. And then at the last minute called it off when he heard there'd be lots of human casualties. So I think having a strong national security advisor is good for the country. And the president ultimately has to make the decision whether to follow the advice of the national security uh, advisor. Yeah. Professor Dershowitz, thank you very much for your time tonight. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing news channel. Newsmax TV is now available for free on your smartphone. Just go to your iPhone or Android store and download the free Newsmax TV app. Then you can watch free TV news with an American spin anytime, anywhere in the world. Newsmax TV, real news for real people.